human on chip is a new exciting area of research which promises to revolutionize the way we record biological data. Um, it forms a complex physiological model which through a series of inputs and outputs allows us to gain better understanding of efficacy of drug therapies as well as the fundamental science behind tissue and cell responses. So the reason human on chip is being developed is to address the problem associated with current drug and cell response testing. Uh, in conventional drug testing, drugs are tested on animals before they reach the clinical trial phase in humans. Uh, the problem with this method is that the animal model doesn't accurately represent the interactions that occur between the body and drug compounds in humans. Uh, this can mean there is a reduced efficacy or toxicity of the compounds in humans. Uh, it's also a costly and time-consuming process that is difficult to alter part way through the trial. Measuring the response to compounds can also be difficult in animals. Cell response testing is performed in vitro on cell cultures. The problems with this method are that the surrounding biological conditions of cell responses is difficult to interpret. It is also difficult to control the conditions within the cell culture in vitro. The conventional methods used in cell response testing also restrict the cell growth which limits its usefulness due to the 2D nature of the cell response. So, the solution for these issues is a human on chip system. This novel method works by mimicking the body's physiological and pathophysiological environments. This means that we can resolve the problems associated with both conventional testing methods in a more accurate way. Why use a human on chip system? Well, first of all, it's a better alternative to animal testing because of its increased reliability and simulation of a natural biological cell response. Secondly, the human on chip system has various sensors attached within it which record real-time data. Also, this system can simulate a variety of body conditions such as a diseased or a healthy condition. Finally, this system can target and be applied to specific characteristics of in vivo physiology, such as specific, a specific organ or a multi-organ system. Well, how does the system work? General composition of the inputs to the system could be a biopsy-derived tissue, cultured tissue, primary cells and stem cells. In addition to these, growth factors and other nutrient media as well as drug components to be tested are added. This then goes into the chip system which emulates the natural biological environment and cells are able to function as they would inside the body. Measuring the composition of biological factors, hormones and metabolic waste products and cell signaling molecules allows us to paint a full picture of the biological activity. For example, if you were interested in testing the cell behavior of lungs, then a biopsy of the epithelial membrane is input and we might measure factors like mechanical stress as an output. But this new technique isn't perfect. Firstly, the ex vivo biopsies aren't readily available and it can be difficult to access deep tissues when things like tissues of the liver are required. In previous studies, research groups have only been able to sustain normal cell activity for relatively short periods of time. This varies dependent upon the type of tissue though. Um, also, it's been found that the phenotypes of the cell tend to change over time. Why is that? Well, we're not really sure, but most likely it's related to the discrepancy between the real-world environment and the simulation that we've got in this human-on-chip system. Lastly, for reasons related to biopsy methods, it's often difficult to construct a realistic 3D environment for the chip, but work on this field of bioengineering is rapidly improving. So, what about the future prospects of this research? Well, we need to try and increase the usable lifetime of the organ or the human on chip system. So at the moment it's very limited in that respect, but if we increase the lifespan over which the system can be simulated, uh, then it will be a lot more useful and we'll have a lot more useful outputs. Secondly, optimization of the mead culture media composition is needed. And actually analysis of the rate of the biological processes over time in terms of how they correlate between the in vivo and the human on chip systems is something that will be proved to be very useful in terms of analyzing biological data. Finally, investigating how to reduce the phenotypic variation that we saw was a problem earlier is uh, one of the major milestones that will be have, have to be overcome when improving this research. 
Finally, to summarise, currently limitations in the technology used to construct human and organ on chip systems are restricting its application. However, future research will prove to be very useful in our understanding of drug responses for therapy, as well as our understanding in the fundamental science that supports these studies.